Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Rohit Agarwal. I'm an associate professor of medicine at University of Pittsburgh. I work in myositis field and um, today we'll talk about myositis and COVID. And uh, we're glad to have with us uh, Dr. Latika Gupta uh, from Sanjay Gandhi Institute, Postgraduate post, uh, Institute of Medical Sciences, Lucknow, India. And she did a fascinating uh, study which is recently published um, on uh, uh, problems that myositis patients face uh, during COVID year. Um, so welcome Dr. Latika Gupta um, to the show. Thank you Dr. Agarwal for the very kind introduction. And I'm really glad to share the results of my study today. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask you some tough questions here Latika. All right, you get ready? Yes. All right. So Dr. Latika, what were the main findings of your study? Uh, so we conducted an online survey among uh, 608 patients of myositis and of these nearly 80% were female. Uh, dermatomyositis was the most common subtype um, in nearly 40% of our respondents. And most of our participants were from the United States and nearly 20% from the UK. Now, the worrisome bit was uh, that nearly one third of our respondents uh, reported health-related problems which were attributable directly to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, nearly half of them required an increase in medications. Um, over one thirds were hospitalized for disease related complications and nearly one in six required an increase in the doses of steroids due to worsened disease activity. Um, so Dr. Gupta, do you think that um, myositis patients are at increased risk for COVID um, related complications then? Yes, uh, indeed, they do seem to be at higher risk. Uh, in fact, over half of the surveyed patients were uh, receiving glucocorticoids or had an underlying cardiovascular risk factor, which uh, places them at higher risk for severe COVID-19. And uh, almost one in four of these patients faced hurdles in procuring medicines and had to go out to get their medicines, which put them at further risk. I see. Uh, what about IVIG patients on IVIG and infusion drug? Did they face any trouble? Yes, uh, there were several logistic challenges uh, which these patients encountered during the pandemic period. In fact, nearly 25% of patients who were due for any kind of infusion uh, of these almost one in five had to delay treatment. And uh, some were still searching for an alternative at the time of the survey. Um, so, Dr. Gupta, what were the other logistic challenges that our patients, myositis patients, encountered? Uh, so, apart from the IV infusions, uh, myositis patients were also scheduled for physiotherapy sessions, which can be very critical for the management of these patients. And these were disrupted in a significant proportion of individuals, nearly one-third of those who were scheduled. And one quarters of these experienced difficulty in contacting the specialist and uh, nearly 5% were unable to do so. In addition, uh, of the 160 who faced difficulty in uh, procuring medicines, nearly 70% had to resort to alternative means. And uh, uh, some of them also had to seek help from family to get them, while 10% were forced to stop treatment uh, due to the situation. I see. I see. So there were a lot of logistic challenges from procuring medications from, to IVIG infusions uh, to, for physical therapy. All these are critical for our myositis patients. And, and your study showed that our myositis patients, many of them had a lot of difficulty in, these, um, in this situation. Yes, indeed. It seems to be a really dismal scenario. All right, Dr. Gupta, what, were, what are the proposed solutions from in your mind or in your study? Uh, what did the patient said? What could be, what could we do better um, you know, during COVID period and it's still ongoing? So we did ask our patients about this, uh, including their preferences for maintaining continuity of care in the peri-pandemic period. And uh, teleconsultations were uh, the uh, preferred means of consultation. In fact, audio-visual consultations were uh, preferred by the large majority. And uh, apart from this, I think community-based paramedicine with uh, an integrated system comprising of community uh, service workers uh, who coordinate with the hospital staff may be useful for better penetration. We can also use app-based programs uh, because of the wide use of smartphone apps and uh, um, mobiles and devices across the world. So these can probably sync in with the hospital information systems. Uh, 
Infusions were another um, key problem. So probably home-based infusions like IVIG, uh, people could shift to subcutaneous if they uh, require those, and that could probably be facilitated for these patients. So a lot of patients are moving towards telemedicine or, or, or audio-video consultation board. Um, so how do you assess uh, muscle weakness in those patients? Because myositis patients suffer from muscle weakness. How would a doctor assess muscle weakness? So indeed, uh, uh, this was something which we uh, really struggled with in the initial pandemic period, but then uh, as necessity is the mother of invention. So we devised several uh, measures of remote assessment uh, where the patients had to take the lead and um, do simple home-based uh, activities like two minute walking distance or the time to lift arms up and down 10 times or timed up and go test. So simple home-based maneuvers. And with that, gradually we started to get an idea what is the average for a person in remission. And if it is off the charts, then probably we'll ask them for a detailed uh, examination. So these are simple home-based tests that the patients themselves can do at home to assess their function or their strength and then doctors can make use of that information, correct? Forget yes, right. but we're still working on those uh, and some of those uh, devices where you are also in use and hopefully we can test them in a larger population in the future. Um, can you name some of these tests for our patients that they can use, they can do it at home easily? Yeah, some of the useful tests include a two minute walk distance where they're asked to walk for two minutes and measure the distance in meters. Uh, sit to stand where they are asked to sit up from a chair, stand up from a chair and um, measure the number of times they can do that in 30 seconds. The arm raise test where they're asked to raise arms um, for 30 seconds and we measure the number of times they can do that. And the timed up and go test is a simple test where they have to get up from the chair uh, up to 10 feet and get back to the chair. So these are four remote outcome measures which uh, we found useful in our clinic. All right, thank you. So Dr. Latika Gupta, could you summarize uh, the results of your study in few lines for us? Yeah, so this uh, large descriptive study by our patients suggests that the pandemic has uh, led to a serious impact and disrupted uh, continuity of medical care for many patients with myositis. And uh, there is a concern that uh, these delays and omissions in clinical care may potentially translate into poorer outcomes in the future. And, and then the solutions that proposed, uh, that came out of your study, a lot of patients preferred telemedicine or audio video consultation, at least in the interim, correct? Yes, so that is something we need to look at, uh, better tools for teleconsultation to uh, make sure that we can provide better service to our patients. Um, thank you, Dr. Latika Gupta. Thank you for this uh, excellent interview on the on your study and congratulations for your uh, for publication of your paper. Uh, we'll provide the link of your full paper um, in, in the in the in the video itself. Um, and uh, thanks for the great work that you're doing for myositis patients. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.